We will call to, to order the regular board meeting of the Chicago Board of Election Commissioners. Good morning. My name is Marisol Hernandez. Seated to my right is Commissioner William Cressy, and to my left is Commissioner Jonathan Swain. Next item on the agenda is the consideration of the agenda. Are there any proposed changes? If not, we will proceed with the approval of the regularly regular board meeting minutes of November 26, 2019. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. The motion passes. Uh, next is the executive director's report, Mr. Goff. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair, Commissioners. Uh, a couple of things to report on. The joint election officials uh, conference was held January 9th and 10th in Washington, D.C. I attended it. I was proud that they had me open up the conference schedule. It was a, a talk about my 40 years in elections, so it was uh, very interesting. I was very proud. Also, I met with Elizabeth Johnson from the United States Department, the Justice Department on Disability Rights, and she cited the Chicago Board of Elections for all the work that we've done with people with disabilities. So I was really proud about that also. And we also had a meeting with uh, Homeland Security. We did have them in a couple weeks ago reviewing our system. They're coming back. Um, they're going to give a written report. They found it being very stable and very robust. So I think we should all be happy about that. But they're going to continue monitoring and probing. And uh, there was, uh, I had a meeting with the Federal Voting Assistance Program while I was in Washington. Uh, the director, David Burney, just to let you know that on January 15th, they're going all out to talk to uh, military and overseas voters. So we hopefully will be getting a lot of applications on that. I spoke to Clint and Sandra. They're getting extra bodies to do the data entry on uh, hopefully a large turnout that we will be getting. Met with the Postmaster General. He said, How are, how's the thing going, Lance? And I said, well, as soon as we start mailing now, we'll give you a call. And he said, well, my number hasn't changed. So it was, a, it was a real good meeting, a two-day meeting in Washington. I also attended, uh, in, uh, Congress had a hearing on voting equipment. I attended that also. I spoke to our congressmen here in Illinois, and they were very pleased with what we had in place. So I just wanted to let the board members know that. The other item is the, last week, I went to our first uh, train the trainer where it was, it was done really, Charles and I were both observing. It went real well. I'm really proud of uh, the trainers that we have. And Alex from uh, Germany did an unbelievable job. I said it was probably the most thorough explanation of the equipment setting it up in operation. So Alex, thank you very much. Yes, thank it went you. It real well. Thank you, sir. We, uh, with the training the trainers, there were some changes in the handbook as soon as those are out. Hopefully we'll have that on the website. Uh, it was, it was, this handbook is done very well. I, I can have to hand it to the staff. Uh, brand new uh, handbook with the new procedures and with uh, the cooperation from the Dominion and our staff. It's a, it's a nice book. So that's roughly it. I know we have a lot on for the schedule. <coughs> That's all I have to talk about right now. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Good morning, Madam Chair and fellow commissioners. Well, the registration department has completed all rep examinations. Hats off to them. They did a great job. Training and acceptance of the new voting equipment is ongoing. Training for judges and election coordinators has begun over at Block 37. Uh, on tomorrow, we have training of the manage, managerial staff for the new employee handbook. And then on Thursday, we have a meeting at the county jail about voting in the jail. And lastly, uh, yesterday, we, as of yesterday, we received about 2,009 uh, requests for vote by mail. Is that mainly just uh, overseas? 
you know, that's a combination of all the categories of uh, by male. Thank you. Mr. Allen? Good morning. Uh, so the first legal notice has been is being published this week for elderly and disabled. We've updated that to reflect the new equipment as well as uh, removing a couple of items that related to the old equipment. Uh, the presentation yesterday to the City Council uh, to secure the funding went really well. I want to thank Mr. Goff, Mr. Holliday, as well as Commissioner Cressy uh, on the prep work and uh, Adam as well. So essentially the Finance Committee has forwarded to the City Council uh, the financing mechanism using bond proceeds to pay for the new equipment. Um, we didn't get the, the, we got questions that were basically about how the equipment will work. Uh, the lion's share of the questions went to um, the mayor's office and the, the finance and, and legal team about the, the uh, you know, whether this was a, a one time or whether this would allow for uh, other issues to be used. So that once they resolved that, uh, after a couple of hours, uh, we were we were done. Uh, we're working on the instructional videos right now, as well as the household mailing. Uh, we've got the design fairly well in place, and we're, um, we now have to get the translations. Then uh, the bid opening on that will be. We hope to be coming to you with the recommendation on the household mailing at the next board meeting. Uh, we've also been in consultation with the Postal Service on that. And the web content and the new languages hopefully will start to come along in the next couple of weeks. It's, uh, I, I get the sense that the amount of content that they need to tackle uh, caught them by surprise. So it, it's, uh, it's quite a lot of material to uh, try to process. And lastly, we're moving along on form signage and envelopes. We were able to find a translator for the bag outline? Yes. Um, the, the challenge, though, is that um, he's um, full-time employed elsewhere. So. Oh, okay. But we, we are working with the county. The county is offered, uh, we're, we're, have, we're working together, and the county said that they have a full-time person, and they'll be able to. So the county's per we, we've traditionally helped the county more, especially with translations related to the ballot. We only have the one referendum question uh, regarding a senior center, or uh, it's an advisory question, a senior center in 10 precincts in the third ward. And so they're gonna help us with that one. proceed to old business, infrastructure projects and changes in election administration and voting equipment. I think we've tackled that. Electronic poll books. Uh, things are going well with the poll books. They have warehouse, uh, doing pre light on those and running tests. The stands, the upgrade of the stands. The judge will be in on Thursday. A little miscommunication about the quantity that was available. You will be in on Thursday to explain that. Okay. Well, the, number that was the number that was mentioned was, was not available. We only have enough for training, and we're waiting for ESMS to start delivering all the material to the warehouse so the upgrades can be done. The number we were told that they had already available was not available. Okay. Um, and um, um, is there a fix for that? Uh, once the judge comes in, there's a that'll be <laughs> that'll be part of the discussion. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> legislation, Mr. Leska. The I haven't identified any new bills that have been presented, but there are still some that carried over from last session. I think that uh, perhaps the most interesting is the elected school board bill is still uh, sitting there waiting for some action. Uh, the way it's currently drafted, the city council split the city into 20 elected districts for the school board. Um, 
after which the Board of Education in every district over 10 years after the census, these would be nonpartisan elections held in our municipal odd year election cycle. Um, but beyond that, we're going to look for new developments and uh, ways to push our own agenda. Thank you. <clears throat> we will now proceed with uh, new business. Um, and the first issue is uh, with certain uh, petitions for submission of an advisory question uh, at the March 17, 2020 general primary <coughs> election. Um, and uh, the one that pertains to uh, this board is, uh, should the United States government provide Medicare to every American to guarantee health care as a human right? Mr. Lasker? Yeah, this is a, a referendum petition that's presented for the entire 35th board. Uh, the signature requirement from section 28-6 of the election code required 1,116 uh, signatures at minimum. There's a grand total of 504 signatures filed. The Illinois Supreme Court has, uh, as recently as 2015, uh, ruled that ballot access signature requirements are to be strictly enforced. Section 10-8 of the election code uh, states that an election authority such as us shall not certify to the ballot any candidates or referendum petitions that are not in apparent conformity with the mandatory provisions of the election code. The board has policies for making those reviews and determinations under Section 511 of its general rules of administration. And so all that combined uh, means that this board, uh, in my opinion, should make a motion to not certify what we're calling the health care as a human right referendum for the 35th board for the March 2020 primary. Okay. Are there any questions? If not, is there uh, a motion to not certify? Uh, the uh, petition that is presently before us, uh, uh, which states, should the United States government provide Medicare to every American to guarantee health care as a human right? So moved. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Motion passes. Next item of, uh, before us is approval of a contract with Dominion Voting Systems as the awarded bidder from the board's 2017 uh, RFP for a voting system. Well, let me start by just tipping my hat towards uh, some people who no longer work with the board but had a big part in preparing this project back in 2017 when I was with my predecessor, Jim Scanlon, for the general counsel who had a heavy hand in drafting the RFP. Uh, Laurel Blamuser, uh, who was moving out to the city, was the procurement officer at the time. This board has done a very long and very detailed uh, study of the five responses that we originally received. We narrowed that down to three finalists and had a second round of demonstrations, verifications. Uh, it's been a very detailed and long process, but we have settled on what we believe to be uh, best cost, best secure, uh, and most reliable and accurate system uh, through Dominion Voting System. The interesting things here are, you know, we're replacing equipment that was purchased in 2005 uh, with HAB funds. Uh, it was approximately $26 million purchase back in 2005. Uh, bottom line for now is uh, about $18.6 million. So this is substantially less expensive of a system than we're currently operating. Our machines are old and falling apart. And the replacement parts are no longer manufactured or readily available. Uh, so we're, we're uh, very excited, we, as you know, we've been moving forward, preparing for all this equipment uh, for the March primary. Uh, we've had a lot of excellent benefits. Uh, as Mr. Goff referenced, we've got an election judge manual now that's going to be prepared, uh, it is prepared for changing the way that the system works. But uh, we do believe, particularly we've seen now some first examples of our training classes. And the reports are that the judges, the election judges, are very pleased with this equipment. It's just easier for them to use, easier to set up. We think it's easier for the voters to use. Um, so this is a very extensive uh, contract, very detailed scope of work, detailed products and services. Uh, some of the benefits of this contract that I appreciate are uh, it's a 10-year lifespan, 
over the course of the 10 years, any upgrades to the equipment and software we would be able to obtain at no extra cost. That cost is all wrapped in. So, for example, with the uh, bar code legislation in Colorado, uh, where Dominion has equipment, uh, it causes them to change their software and systems uh, out there in Colorado. All we need to do is ask for it here, and we can have it too. So, it's a uh, very good uh, contract that I believe is going to carry forth the board for the next 10 years of elections. Ten years from now, when this contract is coming to expire, we will still have the top of the line software running our systems. And we'll make a decision then, a decade down the road, as to what to do at that point. Uh, but for now, I think our staff is quite pleased with the new system. And uh, we do request that you, uh, you have already awarded the bid, and then we ask that you approve this contract. Just, just one note out of what we're talking about, not a term contract. What's the expected useful life for the, for the equipment, as sort of software that will be updated with so. The equipment itself expected lifespan, I don't know exactly, but longer than the 10 years. Uh, and of course, the equipment we're using now is at about the 15 year mark. Uh, starting to with this one, we believe. So they've, they've built it for longevity, and that's why their contract includes all the upgrades. It's because they're, it seems as though their business plan is let's create a really good system that works, physically works, and then we upgrade that system. And, and uh, Dominion would assist us if we were, say, to transition to both centers. You know, absolutely. Well, this, absolutely. Because this equipment can adapt to that very this, nice. this It works <laughs> very well for that. In fact, that was one of the questions that, I'm sorry, that, that was one of the questions that was asked by the city council. If we do go to a new model, and I said this fits very, very well. This equipment is being used already in jurisdictions that have uh, heightened vote by mail. And so we have high-speed scanners that are part of this. The adjudication process is somewhat remarkable. Uh, these scanners create an image of every ballot, and you can then adjudicate those ballots on the computer screen. Every time you make a change, it gets uh, saved into the, uh, the data log for each individual ballot. You can see exactly who made the change, exactly when, exactly why. Um, and so yes, vote centers is particularly what these would be, machines would be good for out in the voting precincts. And then increased vote by mail here at our offices, we can handle it all. But my point is, and they would assist us in, in that transition. And they're contractually obligated to do so. Excellent. Thank you. If there are no further questions, is there a motion to approve the contract with Dominion Voting Systems uh, for a new voting system in the amount of $21,139,811? Uh, in addition uh, to an annual license and warranty fees equaling $1,070,135 uh, per year. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Motion passes and the contract is approved. Next on the agenda is the adoption of a resolution requesting grant funds from the City of Chicago for the for the purchase of new voting equipment and services. So now that we have a contract for the voting equipment, we need to pay for it. Uh, the city is statutorily obligated to make that purchase or to provide us the funds for it. Um, after some long negotiations with the city where they had you know, Dominion to uh, supply us with three different purchase options, a full out of purchase price, and then two different financing plans. That's really up to the city as to how they wanted to handle that. Uh, Mayor Lightfoot and others decided that the full out purchase, because it's you know, six or eight million dollars less over the 10 years, let's do it that way. In order to free up that amount of money, they are amending their 2019 bond ordinance uh, so they can provide us a, a one time grant of bond funds for this purchase. In order to obtain the grant for bond funds, we need a resolution request. This resolution also, by the way, authorizes the executive director and myself to execute a reasonable and necessary uh, grant agreement with the city, uh, showing the draft of that, that uh, the city is still finalizing that document. Okay. Is there a motion? motion to approve the resolution 
requesting grant funds from the city of Chicago for the purchase of new building equipment and services. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. The motion passes and the resolution is approved. Next on the agenda is a legal report. Mr. Lasker. Well, a lot of my report is being active on today. <laughs> a lot of what I've been working on with the and stuff, and then of course, electoral work coming up. Um, but I'll also point out that we have finished and posted the job description for the executive director position. Uh, rumor has it when the gentleman on my left is going to leave some decade. <laughs> uh, the job posting is on our website. We, have, we are working with an executive search firm that is posting in other areas throughout the country. Uh, and so I just encourage the public to take a look. And if you know, anybody qualified, please let us know. Uh, also, interestingly, I have gotten in touch with the uh, Hamilton County, Ohio uh, election department, that's where Cincinnati is. Uh, we're going to be working together, although we're not the same state, on uh, trying to find CLE credits for our election judges. Okay. So um, I had reached out last year to some bar associations and got positive feedback. And I'm going to uh, now contact the you know, CLE board. Uh, but uh, the, so somehow, Cincinnati heard that we were interested in doing this, and so they called up the Thank you. Um, we will now proceed with our financial report. There is a balance sheet and voucher listing for the City of Chicago of 2019 appropriation number 19-08 dated January 14, 2020 in the amount of $1,095,009.06. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Motion passes. Uh, next is public comment. We have one request for public comment. Ms. Tobin from the Illinois Ballot Integrity uh, Project. Uh, good morning. I guess uh, <clears throat> we've all been waiting for the approval of the uh, new voting equipment contract. <clears throat> so I, I just have a few comments, uh, maybe a couple questions. Um, I always have a hard time hearing <laughs> what's said here, so I don't know if there's anything that can be done to improve the loudspeaker thing, or maybe it's my ears that need to be improved. I think well, that's why we, we bought these, oh, because okay. they're, they're, they amplify. I will try to speak a little louder. A little closer. Okay, great. Um, Anyway, um, in general, um, I am glad that the contract includes the upgrades for the software because our previous objection was to the barcode, uh, which the election security experts at all of the universities, University of Michigan, University of Berkeley, uh, Georgia Tech, uh, North Carolina, have all said that actually uh, the ballot marking devices are uh, a security risk and can be hacked. So I don't understand why we're not listening to the secure, to the uh, uh, computer experts that we have. It reminds me of how we didn't listen to climate change experts, the scientists there. We didn't listen to the people on the opioids that we always have to go back, you know, years later when new evidence comes up. So, you know, that's my only reservation. And I have a copy of this uh, article from, um, it was published before the holidays, but from the New York Review of Books uh, by Jennifer Cohn, How New Voting Machines Could Hack Our Democracy. Um, anyway, so the, I did mention the thing about, um, you know, the, the code not, not being secure and so I'm pleased that they're going to include that because that is what, um, in our conversations with people in Colorado that they're working on and that that is included in this contract uh, is a positive thing. So I hope that we're going to move to that phase, you know, full speed ahead so that we can actually have real paper ballots and that can also be used in an audit um, or whatever. So I'm a little bit confused maybe about the money because um, Mr. Lasker said uh, 18.5 million, but the contract was 21 million and some odd money, and uh, 1.7 million 
per year. So I don't, I don't know about the math. Maybe you can explain those three different figures. Um, so what was what the, what were my other points to make? Um, okay. So the other question was uh, for the no. So now we're going to have these uh, ballot marking devices for the early voting. So it's going to they're going to be ballots in the early voting sites. So what's going to happen at the end of the day? How are those ballots going to be secured? Are they going to be picked up every day? Or are they going to be left in the, in the precinct? Um, I mean, that's a question for you know, the security of the ballots. Um, will the early voting uh, ballots be counted in the precinct on election night, which we really would, would prefer? More transparency, more local? Uh, Against the law. Hmm, OK, I wonder who did that. Um, Okay, so my last question then is, since now you've voted on this, is this considered a public document so that we could kind of have a copy of it today? Wonderful. Okay. Well, uh, or is it uh, a FOIA request? Yes, you can submit a FOIA request. I yeah. did, yeah. Okay. So he knows about that. Okay. So okay. if you want to just give me a little rundown on those, um, the number of differences. So there's a grand total value of the contract about a $3 million uh, discount that Dominion put on top of that okay. to bring it down to the Now, there's an annual uh, payment for software licensing, I believe it is, but otherwise it's, a, it's an upfront purchase. There are originally three options, the upfront purchase or the two financing plans, but, but we're moving forward on the full purchase. Uh, and then there's an amount that will be in our budget every year uh, for paying the approximately one uh, something. 1.7 million uh, per year. Oh, okay. Okay. Right. Thank you. I can also address just briefly the barcodes that, that she's discussed. First of all, uh, barcodes hacking our election system. The, the machine that makes those barcodes, the touchscreen ballot marking device, is uh, never attached, uh, never connected to the internet. So it would be extremely difficult to hack it because you have to. Connected. You have to be touching it. You have to be in the room with it. Um, and of course, the machines are covered with, as you can see, they're covered with security uh, and uh, seals. seals and so forth. Um, also, the, the the election community is very split as to whether or not it's really such a bad thing. There are, certainly are academics that uh, Ms. Tobin did share that article with us previously, and she's very correct about that uh, some people are worried about it. The biggest concerns have been the jurisdictions where the barcode prints out on a piece of paper without showing your individual ballot choices. Right. And so what, what I think the public needs to understand that for Chicago, the way we're running the system, is you mark your choices on that screen. It's going to print out an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper that does have the barcode on it, but it also shows each and every one of your selections. It doesn't show the full ballot, only the ones you select. And you get to hold that in your hand and review it believe is better than the old the current equipment where it's just behind a little window on like a cash register receipt. You know, that, that ballot marking device doesn't really touch your ballot. This one you hold your ballot in your hands and, and you can review it and you feed it. And now we believe it's going to be extremely easy for us to identify any problems with the barcodes because we can just look with our eyes, count the precinct as to what the selections are, and then see if the scanner came out with the same number. So uh, the machines are secure in that regard. We believe that they're very auditable post election. Mr. Allen? The study that's being cited um, out of the University of Michigan, there are two important points about that to make. The first is that the study itself recommends the board's plan for the usage of a ballot marking device. It recommends that for a large jurisdiction where early voting is conducted and voters come from multiple jurisdictions and voting districts such as ours and we will have in the neighborhood of 800 ballot styles between the Republican and the Democratic Party and we will have those in six languages so in order to provide any ballot style to any Chicago voter regardless of what early voting site they show up. This is the only means, and the study points that out. The second and more critical item 
that uh, should be pointed out is that uh, if you think back to the extremely rare instances where under the old touch screens they would fall out of calibration and either touching the screen either resulted in no selection or the wrong selection it would be it was very rapid when we would hear about that the action was the protocol was very simple you shut down that piece of equipment until you could figure out what was going on you either replaced it with one that worked or you recalibrated it until it did work this study presumes that no matter how many times it's noted and it was detected voters did detect it wasn't all the time but voters did detect this this study presumes that the election authority after there was a flaw detected would simply make no changes not examine the, the voting equipment and we know from past experience that's just not the case if we have a problem with the paper ballot we send out you know where they're giving out the wrong one what let's say by by uh, human error we send out an investigator similarly if there's a problem with a piece of equipment we shut it down so I understand the, the concerns raised by the study and I share the concerns raised by the study but I don't believe that there's an election jurisdiction uh, or at least I don't believe this election jurisdiction would simply hear a report of a flaw and just continue voting with that so okay. thank you Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Could you give us uh, one more question she raised, which was about the uh, security ballots on the, um, in the, uh, in the election, in the early voting sites, right? Yeah, we were going to have an investigator bring them to a secure area and have them locked up every night. We're not leaving them out in the location. Okay, so there'll be a chain of custody between, mm -hmm. between the early voting location and, and, and uh, secure location where we're putting this ballot. Okay. And again, it, the election code requires that the early voting uh, results are processed here in our central office and released after that. Just want to make sure that question is answered. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Next, uh, item on the agenda is executive session. Is there a need? No. No need. Okay. If not, uh, we will then. Um, uh, I will entertain a motion to adjourn to our next regularly scheduled meeting on January 28th at 9.30 a.m. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second? Right. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Motion passes and we are adjourned. Excuse me.